In a perfect world, there would be no viruses or other diseases, and no one would ever get sick. But since little nasties that make you feel lousy do exist, prevention seems like a pretty good idea, doesn't it? Now, for people, the solutions are pretty well established. But online, it's not always so clear. Computer nasties can be hidden in links, downloaded files, and even pop-ups or other advertisements. So you'll need software to protect yourself, but how do you know which one? Most internet security companies try to market their service as one of two things, antivirus or anti-malware. But wait a second, Linus. Malware is just any software that's mal or bad. So wouldn't viruses just be a subset of that? What gives? Let's think of security software as people and viruses as music or something. An antivirus program would be kind of like your dad. Sure, he's got a lot of life experience, which is great, but his taste in music uh, is pretty much straight oldies. It takes a lot of repetition for a new song to enter his repertoire. Antivirus programs, in much the same way, are mostly effective on the more classic types of malware, or at least the types that have seen the most press. Things like worms, trojans, and some keyloggers will be on their watch list, but often trendier types of malware like zero-day or zero-hour exploits, ones that take advantage of a vulnerability almost immediately after it's found, before the software maker has any time to patch it, are not covered. Anti-malware programs are kind of like dad's teenage daughter. They have to be up on the latest trends, the most popular new songs, but they may have never heard of Hey Jude or Yellow Submarine. The software that anti-malware companies make in the same way is much more, you know, hip or, or with it. And this is important because without great software like Malwarebytes, for example, some zero day or zero hour exploits would exist for months before we got a reliable fix, potentially compromising the security of thousands or even millions of people, depending on the severity. The thing about them though, is they often don't worry about keeping a fix for viruses that are months or years old around, because by that time, antivirus programs should have them covered. So then, if antivirus and anti-malware programs attack different types of malware, how do you determine which one you should use? The answer is both. Whoa, 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 Linus, hold on a second there. I've heard that running two security programs simultaneously is bad for performance. That is definitely true. And if you used both a real-time scanning antivirus and anti-malware program at the same time, that could slow down your PC and can even cause conflicts between the two program scan functions. No, the trick is to run an active antivirus scanner that serves as a catch-all and have an on-demand anti-malware program that you can run full scans with periodically or when you notice a change in your computer's performance. But how should you determine which program to use? Well, the answer, and I know this is a bit of a cop-out, but it's true, is to do your research at the time you're getting it. Watch out for paid options that are redundant or only applicable in a setting with multiple simultaneous users, like in a small business, and check out the latest reports on the effectiveness of the various softwares out there, because they're changing relative to each other all the time. The good news is that there are a ton of awesome antivirus and anti-malware services out there, and though this may surprise some of the less tech-savvy viewers, free does not equal bad when it comes to these services. By the way, I want to give a big shout out, speaking of free, to Lifehacker for writing this article for free that served as an inspiration for this video. You can check it out at the link in the video description. They're awesome folks. They share our stuff. We share their stuff. Everyone's happy and everyone learns something in the process. Speaking of learning in the process, Today's video sponsor is a new one here on Tech Quickie, Little Bits. Their goal is to lead a hardware renaissance where everyone, regardless of age, gender, technical ability, or discipline, can learn and be creative with electronics. They offer over 60 modules with a wide range from simple power, sensor, and LED kits, all the way up to programmable, wireless capable modules. So maybe you have an idea for a new gadget and you don't know where to start, or you're curious about how technology works and you wanna get some hands-on learning time in, Little Bits is there to help you take the next step in creating, who knows, maybe the next big thing in electronics. And this is cool, for Tech Quickie viewers, they're offering a savings of 20 bucks off your first kit when you head over to littlebits.com and use offer code TechQuickie. So whether you're a young maker just getting started, a seasoned pro who wants to cut down on prototyping time, or maybe you know someone who you think might have an aptitude for this kind of thing, it's a great gift idea, head over to littlebits.com to check out what they have to offer and be sure to use offer code TechQuickie 
Rocky on the checkout to save 20 bucks. Thanks for watching, guys. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment letting me know if you have suggestions for future Fast as Possibles. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Don't forget to subscribe to TechWiki for more videos just like this one.